I have to start the intro with a spoiler. I pulled a gear bump that does not leak. Yes, true story. In this video, we are going to pull the gear bump again, but the design is improved from my previous attempts, and I finally pulled the bump that does not leak. Like if you have come across with this channel before, you most likely know that the leaking have been um issue. Well, not anymore. I figured out how to fix this, and this is how I did it. Enjoy. For this gear bump, we need four things. Acrylic lead that will be CNC'd, one set of gears that will be resin printed, pump housing that also will be resin printed but made by BCB way to get this nice transparent finish, and one shaft. I'm starting with the lead. This lead will be CNC'd with Makera Guerrera Air. To make this happen, first I had to program the job. I started by cutting three buckets, that will be followed by pouring holes for M4 bolts, and the last I will cut the lead out. I'm using transparent acrylic because I'm obsessed building everything transparent. This makes the video and project way cooler when we can actually see inside the device that I'm building. It's actually my first time CNCing acrylic. Usually I use laser cutter, but because I need those pockets that don't go through the lead, I have to use CNC. I mean, it turned out how I expected it to be. So the lead is done and we will use it later when we have the rest of the things. Gears. Because they are small and the accuracy have to be spot on, I'm using my Hagi Reflex RS with Pau Dan resin. This is similar to ABS like resin, but much stronger which makes this ideal for gears and for my application. Both the gears are different models, one of them is driver gear and one slave gear. If I resin print, I always remove supports after the wash and before the gear, then they are still soft, but not messy. When I got the gears done, it's time to unbox the gearbox body. I ordered this from PCB way like I told before. I want the bump to be fully transparent, and there is no better company than PCB way to make this happen. If you have watched any of my videos, you know I use their service a lot, especially when it comes to 3D printing transparent parts. But this is not all they do. PCB Way also has 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication and even injection molding service. Like literally, whatever you need but you cannot make by yourself, PCB Way got you covered. Also the material selection is huge. You can let them print your part from aluminium all the way up to titanium. The best part is, their service is just so simple to use. Just upload your 3D model, select the material, if needed leave a note and PCB Way will do the rest. So if you don't have right machines, skills or tools, PCB Way is your one-stop solution. The gear bump body looks just excellent, fully transparent and beautiful. But what I don't know, was my measurements accurate? Well, the gears fits in there perfectly. The slave gear has this little extrusion that will go into the pocket to keep the gear where it should be, which is spot on. Also, the lead seems to fit on there nicely and the gear still spins freely. So it seems everything right now is excellent, except one little oopsie doopsie. The bearing hole for driver gear shaft is little loose, but I think this will not be a big problem, because I will just fill the gap that I plan to do anyway to reduce leaking. Now we can move on to final part before the assembly, shaft. I'm using 8mm steel shaft that I got into right size and then filed 1mm off from one side. This makes this gear nicely engaged with the shaft while rotating. At first I plan to use set screws, but for resin printed parts it just doesn't really hold. Now the gear fits to the shaft nicely, but to make the connection extra strong, I'm using a bit super glue. Resin prints and metal glues together with super glue mega strongly. So now when we have the gear on the shaft, it's time to put it all together. At first I will fix the bearing in place. Like I showed you before, the clearance were a bit too great for just a press fit. So instead I'm using silicone glue to fill this little extra clearance and make this fixed into position. The stuff I'm using is the best possible thing for this application. This is meant to glue, fill and seal everything in the bathroom. It works with all materials like ceramic, plastic, metal, glass. This is absolutely my favorite silicone or glue for applications related to water. Next I'm using the same stuff again to the other side where I'm installing the shaft seal. Here I try to seal the gap from any possible leaks. I use a load of it, just to figure out that I used 6mm shaft seal instead of 8mm. So I repeated it all over again. This was a messy process, I glued my hands and my table and my camera a bit, but eventually I got this done. Next I installed the gears 
and use the same stuff again to seal the gap between lead and housing. Again, I used a nice amount of it to make sure that this doesn't leak. Then I use them for bolts to secure the lead in place. The bolts might look oversized, but they are not, they will have application later. So now the bump is ready, it still spins nicely and I let it cure overnight. Meanwhile it's curing, I wanna explain why this pump should not leak. There are three possible spots where the water can come through. One is the hose nozzles. Previously I always used brass hose nozzles that I screwed to the pump into undersized holes. Well this never worked. I used different stuff to seal them, but it just never worked. This time I didn't use the brass hose nozzles. Instead they were designed into the pump. So there is no gap and this spot cannot leak. Second spot where this pump can leak is the small gap between the lead and housing. Because I use a lot of silicon and make sure everything is covered, it should not leak there. And third is the shaft. Well again, outer wall of the shaft seal was nicely sealed. So if it leaks from here, then the shaft seal just not work. Not my fault. Like I made everything I can to make this pump leak proof. But we'll see what actually happens right now. For the first test run, I'm using power drill to see does this pump even work and will it leak. I had a problem with self priming, but when I gave it a little help, it started. And like we see, the pump is working, but the performance is not that great. Well, the issue of course is the low RPM. At max setting, this power drill runs at 2000 RPMs. This is way due less. That's why after this test, I will print the mount and attach 775 DC motor to it, which spins at maximum of 12000 RPM. This will make a huge difference for sure. But what is most important, this water pump doesn't leak anywhere. Well guys, did we really did it? First not leaking water pump on let's print channel after 6 years? Well, let's not get ahead. Right now it doesn't leak, that's true. But when we increase the RPM 6 times, then the pressure inside the pump will also increase. So if it doesn't leak with the next setup, then we can say for sure this pump doesn't leak. To attach the better motor to the gear pump, I first printed the mount. I used my Bamboo Lab HDD that I just got and I'm already impressed how freaking good this printer is. Anyway, I used two nozzles, one of them printing the part and the other support interface. This saved me a bunch of time and the result is absolutely excellent. Now when I have those three parts, I can attach the motor to the pump. First I install those things at the sides, that's why we needed those oversized M3 bolts. After this I attached the motor to the mount, then it turned out my measurements was little off, so I had to print the spacer. Then the motor shaft and the gear pump shaft will be connected together with the coupler and now it's done. Problem with this, the transparency of the water pump is now covered, but it's way more powerful than before. I didn't wanna run this pump dry, but I had to see does it even work. And for sure it did, but after a short period of time it started melting the acrylic. So no more running it dry and let's go back outside. Instantly we can see how much better it works. It's now self primes without the problems and the performance are noticeably better. The spread of the water looks like a shower for some reason, but I think it's due to the wide outlet nozzle. But now I'm happy how this pump performs. And also this pump does not leak. While testing, I had only good look on the shaft section. Well, this area was completely dry, but later I closely looked the footage and I didn't see any leak anywhere. So now we can say this pump does not leak. Well, this is the first time. I have boiled pumps that leaks just a little bit, but this one truly does not leak. Well, this alone makes this project a great success in my books. Even though this pump is transparent, there is nothing much to see inside, so that's why I played with the inlet tube. Pulling this out of the water and push it back in. This helps to see what happens inside because the air getting into the pump. Overall, I'm really grateful how this project turned out. It performs decently and it doesn't leak. That's for sure get the whole spotlight for me. But guys, if you wanna build this by yourself, I share the files completely free. By the way, if you don't have CNC, resin printer or don't plan to use PCB way service, you can build this pump fully with FTM printer. I actually designed this for FTM printer, but I ended up not using FTM printers at all for this project. Except the mount of course. So go ahead and make this by yourself. 
By the way, if you are still here, leave a like and comment if you don't mind. And do not miss my upcoming videos, subscribe. But for now, thank you for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.